Good evening, family. Hope that you are having a blessed day thus far and that you will continue and an enjoyable and blessed evening. I wanted to pop on real quick and run over a couple quick things. Thank you to each one of you who's taken the time to watch my videos, to make comments, to offer feedback. I am most grateful, I'm humbled, and it is my prayer that you have gotten something from it, positive, a blessing, anything of that sort. So I am grateful, I'm grateful to you all who have shared with others, and I ask that you would continue to do so. Um, I don't know who these are for, that is God's business. I just want to be obedient. So the more we share it, the more his word gets to someone. Because um, this is clearly not about me. And I'm humbled to even be in position that God wants to use me as a vessel. So thank you for that. Um, I did get some really good feedback. Um, like my videos are really long. And I am going to work to keep them um, in a shorter form and be concise about what it is that I'm going to discuss. So today, I was reading, um, I get Charles Stanley's monthly um, pamphlet, and it has a specific thing for each day. And today's title, well, it wasn't for today, it was for the 14th um, of this month, but I just happened to pop it open and it was called Safe Haven. And it talks about friendship as a ministry. And that is something I never thought about. Like, our friendships are to be a refuge for our friends. It's supposed to be a safe haven for them. To be able to come and, you know, we're supposed to bear one another's burdens. And I'll get to the scriptures uh, in a moment. But it was really something to kind of think about. I never thought of my friendships as a ministry. I treasure my friendships and I try to nurture them. But I never thought about it as an active ministry. And it really does change your perspective. So I want to run through a couple of quick things that um, he mentioned. And the first was Galatians 6 and 2. And it talks about, as I said, bearing one another's burdens and sorrows and so forth. It is what God has asked us in his word to do. And that is a part of creating and maintaining that safe space for someone. Um, the other is Proverbs 17, 17, and it says, a friend loves at all times. So not when you feel like it or when you're not engaging, and I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to anyone else. Um, you love a, a friend at all times, and Ecclesiastes 4 9 and 12 talks about lifting up your fallen companions. In other words, when someone is down, you don't kick them. You lift them up. When they have fallen, there's no judgment. There's no, how did you fall? Why did you do this? It's just lifting them up. That's what the word says. And goodness, humans make things so difficult. God made things so simple for us. Well, that's another day and another cup of coffee. Uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 11 also talks about encouraging and building one another up. And that's so important. It really is because, A, you never know what somebody's really going through. As much as they may talk or chat with you, you don't necessarily know what the deep recesses of their heart, what burden they may be carrying. What uncertainty may be lying there? So that's super um, important. And I also saw in it 
that it said a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So it talked about, you know, you by yourself, you know, it's difficult for you to fend off an attack or what have you, and two of you together defend better. And a cord of three is not quickly broken. And that is absolutely true. We are better together. We are better when we're on one accord. We are better when we um, collectively come before God. Um, all of those things. So, again, this is about friendship being a safe haven. And it's a new way, I guess, to think about your friends and that space that you save for them to keep that space judgment-free and safe and nurturing and encouraging and just to lift someone up even if they're doing well then celebrate with them if there's hesitation in something someone's taking on celebrate in advance walk through it with them um and you know think about what friendship is and what you can create in that space to make it a safe haven for you and it's also i think a way a barometer of friend versus acquaintance versus someone I know, et cetera, et cetera, because everybody's not your friend. It's just not. It, that's not how it was meant to be. And you have to be able to discern the difference, not by treating anybody poorly, but just be able to discern where that person is in your life and being honest and genuine about that. So, what does your safe haven look like for your friends? What are some of the things that you try to do to create a safe space for people? For me, I know once someone tells me something, that's the end of it. If you so desire to tell someone else, that is your choice, but it won't be me telling it. If I open my mouth at any point, that means I think you're in danger, immediate, imminent danger. And I tell people that up front, if I think you're going to harm yourself or someone else, I am going to get help. I'm not going to gossip. I'm going to get help. There's a big difference. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got. And I'm going to try to keep my videos under eight and a half minutes. So I hope that you all will stay with me. Again, I pray that... You will hear from God through these videos, through me as a vessel, from him, and you will be blessed. I love you guys so much. No strings attached. Please do take good care and be safe.